Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. Today we'll be talking about the Subjugator class Heavy Cruiser. Now, if you've watched the Clone Wars, you're probably familiar with the Malevolence, the CIS's ion-based super ship from Season 1. What you may not know is that the Malevolence was only one ship within the Subjugator class. However, the question just generally that I aimed to answer in this video is why was the Subjugator not used even more prominently and why did the Empire not try to recreate the plans for themselves. However, while doing research for this video, I found something cool that I thought some of you might be interested in. So we're going to talk about that first, and it's a, well, I won't call it long lost, but very hard to track down Star Wars comic. If you want to skip to the other part of the video where I talk about the flaws in the Subjugator line of ship, I'll put a timestamp on screen, but let's start with Hot Shot. Now, this is a short comic, which appeared only in Volume 6, Issue 54 of the UK's Clone Wars magazine. If you were a hardcore Star Wars fan in the 90s or 2000s, before the internet was as established as it is now, there's a good chance you checked out one of the monthly published Star Wars magazines like Insider. They contained not only fun stories, lore tidbits, but also fully, at the time, canonical comics. As you can guess, it was not easy to track down a single short comic from from a print-only magazine published one month and only in the UK. Thankfully, there are people who are very diligent about these things. Anyway, Hotshot starts off with a Republic briefing where it's revealed that the Separatists are building another Subjugator-class ship in the Enoth system. The ship is not fully built, but like the second Death Star, it's being protected by the planet's energy shield. Rex is responsible for going to the surface and taking out the power generator, which is actually kind of funny, given the fact that this character has long been seen as a nice potential retcon as being Rex at Endor, a trooper on the ground assaulting the Death Star shield. The comparisons to the second battle of Endor continue because, surprise, surprise, the new subjugator is fully armed, although there is a large construction apparatus over its main cannons. On the ground, Rex assaults and destroys the shield generator with a force of ATTEs, with Anakin and his starfighters leading clones at 95s into the superstructure of the subjugator. I don't need to say it. You guys know the comparisons. As they're making their run at the ship's core, they find that it's shielded and it's only finally destroyed by the valiant efforts of the quite cocky clone known as Shooter, who sacrifices himself to destroy the subjugator. The comic ends with the shipyards destroyed and the clones lamenting the loss of a brother who they mostly found pretty annoying. Overall, a really fun comic, and I just remember being a kid before this issue came out, but earlier reading little comics like that, knowing that I'd probably never talk about them with anyone because I just didn't really imagine a world as connected as the one we have now. And a lot of these have been nearly lost to time, so it's always cool to find one. Anyway, I hope you guys don't mind me going off track here, but it's a fun story. Let's talk about the Subjugator and its biggest issues. We see that the Subjugator can effectively control and contend with an entire Republic fleet. It's a massive super weapon. Why weren't more Subjugators put into service. I say more because aside from the malevolence and the one I just mentioned, there were three others all involved in the plot of various sort of, I guess you'd usually call them B-tier Star Wars video games. That's another thing. In the Clone Wars era, we got too many games, not too few. But anyway, it seemed like there were a few key issues which stopped the Subjugator and ships like it from achieving widespread success. For one, after the Clone Wars era especially, ships of that caliber weren't really needed. I've talked about this before, but when it came to Super Star Destroyers, for example, rather than being practical tools of war, they were generally symbols of power and terror used by the Empire. The Clone Wars was pretty much the only time something like the Subjugator was even practical, and we saw that the design had such limitations that it was simply better to put the resources in other materials. Like, if we look at how expensive the Subjugator was to create, yeah, it defeated the whole fleet, but if you put that money into a very big ship with with regular weapons or a bunch of well-armed ships, you probably also can cause the same amount of damage. Let's talk about the weaknesses. I mean, obviously these things were very hard to build.
build and their weapons were obvious weak points which could be exploited but also the technology just didn't seem to be there this is a quote from the essential guide to warfare the plant had a bad habit of bleeding energy that would surge into her other systems sometimes knocking shields communications or other systems offline even dooku himself recognized that the malevolence's best aspect was its use as a terror weapon basically the thing can terrorize planets hold them hostage then run away causing the republic fleet to have to chase it down and use resources the only problem with that is when you put such a high mark on yourself well they're going to come after you which means you either need to create a massive fleet to protect the malevolence or just do your best and obviously that's what grievous did but the ship had several vulnerabilities including of course the strike fighters something that a more conventionally designed fleet wouldn't suffer although it could still inflict terror on worlds just not in quite the same way the other problem is when you put such a big target on yourself it's hard to actually get the ships built the first malevolence was built in complete secret but as we saw with the other subjugators including the fifth one that i just showed the republic generally didn't destroy them during battle they'd either destroy them in transit or take them out in the construction phase so i think in general there's a bunch of issues like how much more effective was the malevolence than a ship which used all of that energy for just more guns the empire preferred to put turbo lasers or super lasers if they were really extravagant on their ships and i think that gives you even more options from palpatine's perspective though the subjugator is a dream ship because it gives something for the galaxy to fear it gives a reason for the republic to continue to ramp up its shipbuilding efforts and it makes the cis and palpatine's personal scapegoat look even more awful as was the case anytime they use non-conventional weaponry especially armed towards civilians now some of the malevolence's lore doesn't necessarily mesh well with what we got in the rest of legends like we hear about massive ships being used by the republic in source books including the mandator line yet a ship the size and power of the malevolence isn't believed to be capable of existing based on again some of the source book material i don't know either way i thought it was really interesting hope you enjoyed this video sorry for sort of going off topic at the beginning there but i thought you guys would like it let me know what you thought about all this and more down below